Hello, I'm Dr. Padma Jalloki Reddy. I'm a hemato-oncologist and bone marrow transplant consultant at Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad, Jubilee Hills. I want to share some information regarding bone marrow transplant today with you all. Bone marrow transplant is not an operation, first of all. It is a cure for many hematological and other conditions. The bone marrow transplant, uh, the way we do it, has improved over the last 10 years and the outcomes are much, much better now. Let's talk about what is a bone marrow. Bone marrow is a spongy tissue which is present in the middle of the long bones. Usually all adults produce bone marrow. In first place, let's talk about what is bone marrow. The, what bone marrow produces, it produces three different types of cells. One red cells, white cells and also platelets. All three different cells have got different function. The red cells carry oxygen to different parts of the body, white cells help us to fight the infections and platelet help us to prevent bleeding. So what happens when we do a bone marrow transplant? What are the conditions we need to do a bone marrow transplant? There are a lot of hematological malignancies like acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoid leukemias or in some forms of chronic myeloid leukemias or bone marrow failure syndromes we can perform a bone marrow transplantation after the chemotherapy to cure the disease. And also in sickle cell anemia recently there are very good results to perform a bone marrow transplant to cure this genetic condition. There are some solid tumors who also require a transplant. In Asian countries the majority of the transplants are happening for thalassemia with a very good outcomes. Let's talk about the process of bone marrow transplantation. When the patient comes to a hematologist with a hematological or other diagnosis, once they're identified as a possible candidate for transplantation, they're referred to a center who performs a transplantation. The doctor will talk you through the whole process. The bone marrow transplant is not an operation where we collect, there, there are different types of bone marrow transplantation. One is autologous transplantation, where we take your stem cells and give a big doses of chemotherapy to kill the remaining cancer cells and we will infuse your stem cells back into your bloodstream. It is done through a peripheral cannula, not by an operation. There are certain rheumatological conditions where we could offer a bone marrow transplant in somebody who had a very severe refractory rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus or vasculitis those can be cured with autologous bone marrow transplant and also very severe refractory multiple sclerosis recently we offer autologous transplant to improve the outcome. Let's look into the process of bone marrow transplant. There are three different types of bone marrow transplant. One is autologous transplant, the second one is allogenic transplant the autologous transplant, the donor cells are from your own body. So we collect your stem cells and then give you chemotherapy to knock out the remaining cancer cells and we infuse your cells back into your stream. And this is done through a peripheral cannula. Second thing is an allogenic transplantation where the stem cells are collected from a donor. The donor can be a sibling, as we know one in four there is a chance that sibling could be a full match or it could be an unrelated donor. How do we choose a donor? When we choose a donor, we look for a matching, what we call as a HLA matching, a human leukocyte antigen matching. These HLA antigens are a proteins which are present on surface of cells on all over the body. What these proteins, the body recognizes these cells as their own if there is a different type of a HLA protein on a cell, the body tries to destroy it. So we would like to match the person, match the donor as close as possible to the recipient. Thanks to John Hopkins research, recently we were able to offer a half match transplants, which could be from parents to children or children to parents, or it could be from a related brother or sister. 
as we only need half of the HLA to be a match. There are very good results in the last five years with the half match and this is a blessing for those who cannot find a donor for the transplant. So once we've identified the donor or the transplantation has been agreed, we would do some tests on a patient to see that he is fit to go through a bone marrow transplantation. We would check their lung functions, we would assess their heart and also how they would cope for infections during the period. Before we give the stem cells back to the patient, we would give them some chemotherapy and also some immunomodulatory drugs in order for the patient to take in the new cells from the donor, we would suppress their immune system. That would call in for increased risk of infections during the period of transplantation. Hence the need for the patient to be in an environment where it could be treated effectively and monitored in a timely fashion. Once all the process of eligibility, the screening tests and the donor has been established, the donor will go on the ephesis machine to collect the stem cells or they would have a bone marrow aspirations to collect the bone marrow stem cells. As I say, there are two different ways we can collect the stem cells. That is one from the bone marrow, second thing from the periphery through a cannula. We would give an injection to the donor where they would release the stem cells into their bloodstream which we will be collected through a line and through a machine. The stem cells are collected in two different ways. One it could be from the peripheral circulation or from the bone marrow. If we are collecting from the bone marrow, the donor will go into the theatre and we will give him some sedative and collect the bone marrow which will be processed before infusing. Or the different way which is easier is giving an injection to the donor for five days and the donor will come as a day case and will go on the machine to collect these stem cells from the peripheral veins which will appear similar to giving blood donations. So once we have got our stem cells, once we have screened our patient, we would admit them and give them conditioning chemotherapy that is preparing their bone marrow to take in the new cells and they would stay in the hospital for four to six weeks during which time their bone marrow would start to recover after the chemotherapy what we call this as an engraftment, that meaning to say that they've taken in the new bone marrow into them and their cells would be produced from the new donor in their body. After that, five to six weeks, once we are happy that patient is stable and he is able to produce his own blood cells, we would discharge them with a very close monitoring, perhaps once a week or twice a week in the beginning for a month. After that, that will be moved on to two to three weekly follow-up. So all essence, bone marrow transplant, there would be an inpatient stay up to four to six weeks, which will vary depending upon the autologous transplant or allogenic transplant, and also a close follow-up for allogenic transplant up to three months. I would say the patient will get back to his normal life after six months as after three months he would still feel a little bit tired under the weather which will take time to recover completely back to his self. During that period we will be closely monitoring them for fungal infections and viral reactivations and we would also check what, how much percentage of the donor they have taken in. There are specific tests we can do to find out how much percent of the donor is in them. We would aim to have 100% of the donor in them. If there is a reduction in the donor, there is a way of dealing with it by giving donor lymphocytes in order to increase the donor status in the patient to fight the diseases. Overall, I would like to say bone marrow transplantation is a complex and complicated procedure. It is not an operation. It would need a multidisciplinary team who are experienced in this speciality. And I would like to say, be aware of the stem cell fraud which is going on. Thank you very much.